Robbie Hughes. Robbie, how are you? Good, Gordon. Thanks. How are you? I'm very well, very well. How was makeup for you? Same as you. We kind of missed it again this week. Yeah, no, it didn't. It doesn't take very long for us. How's everything been going? Uh, very well. Yeah, we're doing good. Distillery's working fine, and uh, everybody's happy and COVID-free. I'm pleased to say. So yeah, That's doing okay. Great. What about I'm you? Good to yeah, very bit well, busy. You know, a lot of time, but it's been great. We've got, and I'm very excited about tonight. So. Um, we have some guests this evening, so um, yeah. we, we, let's not let's not muck about. Let's get them in. We'd like to welcome them in. So um, we have Rosalind Erskine from the Scotsman. We have Blair Bowman from Scottish Field and the founder of World Whiskey Day. Hello, Blair. And we Hi. have Christopher Coates from Whiskey Magazine. So welcome everybody to this cast unlocked this evening. Um, Rosalind, how's everything going with you? Good, fine. Yeah, how are you? Yeah, very well, very well. We're glad to have you on board tonight, and we've got four great whiskies to to try, and hopefully, you've got them all in front of you. What do you? What, what's your thoughts of Glengoyne? Have you? Is it something you? Have you had some Glengoyne and been involved with it before? Um, yeah. So Glengoyne, and I'm not just saying this because it's you guys. Um, <laughs> the 21 year old Glengoyne was um, the whiskey that got me kind of interested in whiskey. Um, I've not really come from like my family aren't really into whiskey. There's not like a million pound Macallan sitting in someone's uh, garden mm -hmm. shed. So it was the 21 year old Glengoyne and a tour of Glengoyne that got me into whiskey. So yeah. Well, we're we're, we're really happy to have you on tonight. That's fantastic, Blair. Um, World Whiskey Day, obviously, probably the, the the thing that sort of got you into the limelight of whiskey, maybe if that's the word. Um, what about you and 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 Glen Goyne? Is it something that you've? Have you a fan of Glen Goyne? Have you drunk yeah, it before? I have. I've, I've tried full range multiple times, I think, um, and I've visited the distillery several times. And one of the most memorable times was actually I was on one of the Dramboree trips. So Dramboree was a kind oh. of whiskey fueled weekend where whiskey fanatics would spend a weekend together. Um, and go on visits to distilleries and that was one of the most memorable distillery visits I'd had in a long time because it was just so many kind of whiskey geeks and we could properly get stuck into the kind of nitty gritty in a kind of safe space with these other kind of shared uh, kind of whiskey enthusiasts so that was a very special trip for me to go and a couple of years back. Well Blair thank you for coming on tonight and uh, Mr Coates Christopher Christopher how are you? I'm very well thank you glad you, to be you. here you do win the most intelligent backdrop of the evening. It's it's all fake. It's all just wallpaper. <laughs> so is this everything else? It's it's one of those uh, one of those special backgrounds that you put on. So obviously I'm in my pajamas. <laughs> so you've obviously been with Whiskey Magazine for how long now? I used to work for Whiskey Magazine. So how long have you been seven, there? Seven years now. Yeah, you you, you joined just after I left. So um, exactly. So of course um, it it all went downhill from there. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Um, how is, uh, how's, I mean, we, we've obviously done stuff together in terms of sherry cast and things like that. Obviously, Glen Goyne, known for its sherry cast, but different ones tonight. What's your thoughts on Glen Goyne? What your sort of your personal experiences of Glen Goyne? Well, I, I've been chasing Glen Goyne ever since I, uh, probably when I first started drinking whiskey, I, I remember having a dram of the old 17 year old in the golf tavern. Uh, just off uh, the, the Brunsfield links. And I thought, and I'd never had Glen Goyne before, and it was the last bit in the bottle. And I thought mm. to myself, oh, this is great. I'll, I, I love this. This is fantastic. And I thought, well, I'll just go and buy a bottle the next day. And uh, obviously that all ended up turning out to be not as easy uh, in the long run. So I, I managed <laughs> to get a few in, and uh, and then obviously yeah. times changed. But luckily, you were very good to us, and you you released more uh, for, of, of other expressions. And well, yeah. I've been enjoying it ever since. So. Thanks, well, guys. good. Well, glad we're, we're really glad the three of you could join us and give everybody not just our opinions of Robbie and I, but also sort of you guys giving opinions on these four great whiskies. So, so Robbie, I want to come back to you and and really talk to you a bit about this concept of casks unlocked and how you obviously had the hard choice of selecting these four casks. I mean, that must have been a tough day. It's kind of a tough job being a distillery manager sometimes, Gordon. You know, you're really putting yourself on the line and it's not easy. But uh, I, I had the idea for this back in April. You know, it's, uh, you, you, like me, have had many people uh, here tonight on the, on the panel as well. We've done lots of whiskey tastings in the past and it's always been the core range. Occasionally, if you're lucky, you might occasionally get to slip in a single cask in one of your whiskey tastings. 
And they're the ones that quite excite people as well. So I've always wanted to do a whiskey tasting where you do just nothing but single casks straight out the warehouse and just have a bit of fun. Yeah, and, no, uh, absolutely. We get bevied up as well, which is always good on a Friday night in a busy <laughs> week. And uh, so what you're asking, how did, what's my how did, you, how did you pick these four casks, these four wonderful examples of Glen Goyne? I had, I had three, three main objectives in mind. Uh, my objective, number one, was to select styles of whiskey that Glen Goyne isn't normally associated with, things that we don't normally put into the bottle, not part of the core range. So that was, that was my first objective. My second objective, I didn't want these whiskies to be too old. I wanted them to be whiskies that would be in, reachable in the pockets of most people. I also wanted th these whiskies to be produced by Ian McLeod distillers. And all of these whiskies were produced under Ian McLeod's ownership. So I've, I've got that. And my third objective was to select whiskies that I like and the rest of you can all go and bugger off as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Fair so, enough. Yeah, no, I think I've done that as well. I've done that as well. So it's just, I mean, it was, I, I was really hoping I would milk this out over maybe three, three afternoons. But we managed to select these four whiskies in 40 minutes. Fantastic. Just, 40 minutes. We then kind of, Steph and I, Steph's my colleague here at Glengoyne. So Steph and I did try a few more casks afterwards. We have a few Rioja casks in this warehouse. We tried them. We had a couple of big PXs. We tried them. But we just think the, the four that we try in here tonight, they, they were just outstanding. So that's why we decided to bring them along and uh, try them. No, well, I'm very excited. So we've obviously got a voting mechanism that people can vote. Um, and those lucky people that have got tasting packs can obviously uh, taste along with us and we can, and, and then they can cast their vote generally once maybe they've tried all four of them. Um, but um, that's how the mechanism, we're going to reveal the results about 9.20, hopefully something around about then. And the winning cast will then be on the website for sale within about five minutes, assuming technology works the way it should do. So we're, we're really excited about it. And um, I don't think there's much more than we can do than rather get into the first whiskey, I think um, that's really important. So Robbie, do you want to just introduce whiskey number A, cask A, which uh, is our first one of the evening? Yeah, we're doing this kind of unusual. When you do whiskey tastings, you normally start with the youngest and you'll finish with the oldest. But the way we're tasting these is exactly the same way that Steph and I discovered them in the warehouse, which happens to be the oldest going down to the youngest. So the first one we're looking at, uh, that's uh, first fill bourbon barrel. That's the one, yeah. That's uh, cask 3550 filled in 2004. It was filled on the 1st of December. <coughs> and I can remember filling this one. I was down in the filling store with my colleagues. It was bloody freezing. And these are the first bourbon casks we filled at Glen Goyne for some years. Mm. We, filled, yeah. we filled 73 on the day, and we've only got two of these casks remaining in the warehouse. Uh, the original contents was 124.8 litres of alcohol, and today we've got 74.88 litres. So the angels are being greedy buggers, and they've had 40% of this cask over the last almost 16 years. So 40% of this cask has, has just evaporated, angel share. Wow, okay. That's so amazing. it must be good then. It must be very good. <laughs> it's either that or, or the guys in the warehouse, Christopher. Yeah. Well, then it, it definitely must be good. <laughs> but they're not angels. I mean, I think I think the key thing is that we, we, we don't use a lot of bourbon casks. We use, we, the Glengoyne in bourbon is fantastic. We all know that. Um, in our core range, the 12 is the only whiskey that really has any first fill bourbon of any note in it in the core range. So um, Glengoyne and bourbon is fantastic. And so, um, you know, we do use a lot of sherry casks, but let's 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 get in amongst this whiskey. 54.9. OK, so yeah, this is the weakest of the bunch. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> right so what we're getting in this, well, I'm, I mean, it's an obvious thing to say. There is definitely a hint of vanilla in this somewhere, of course. You would yes. expect that. 
there's masses of vanilla and you also get the, that that lemon citrusy notes coming through which is associated with uh, a, a, a bourbon first full cask as well Plenty i mean what i yeah there is absolutely i mean I, what, the other thing to, to notice is it, it, i i a little bit noticed this already and it's and it will come be more apparent if i add a drop of water 54.9 there's a lot of that going, going fruitiness and that slow distillation style that we you know, we really generate fruitiness coming through that. And that really comes through. And I think if you had a drop of water, it would be even more apparent. What do you think, Blair, on the nose? I think, I'm, I think it's lifted. I'm getting a lot of kind of Victoria sponge, kind of like yeah. Victoria sponge or with a kind of jamminess, but then also a kind of like lemon drizzle, kind of, kind of fusion of a Victoria sponge and a lemon drizzle cake. But it's very nice. Nice, nice. That sounds great. What about you, Here's Rosalind? a kind of bake-off idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, very good, very good. Um, well, I think to continue Blair's Bake Off idea, I kind of thought um, like stick, sticky toffee pudding with vanilla ice cream for the vanilla thing, but yeah, mm. it's specifically like some kind of cakey, nice. Mm -hmm. It has got a sort of sponge cake sort of thing to it, hasn't it? Christopher? <laughs> I, there's, there's, it, I agree, completely agree. I think for me, I'm getting it's that it's that coconut that's coming through, coming through for yeah. me a lot as well as well as the citrus. It, um, it it reminds me sort of a little bit of having a it's sort of it, it's, maybe we should put this in a pina colada and see what happens. Yeah, there is a little <laughs> bit of that. But there's also there's I, mean, I hadn't thought of pineapple. Now you've said it, I'm like yeah, there is a bit of that in there. And there's um, a bit of that in a barbecue pineapple. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and just for those who, who may not be too aware, ex bourbon casks are renowned for some fairly well known flavours, uh, i.e., American oak is very famous for its sort of vanillin that comes out of it, giving you a lot of vanillas, oak lactones, and those sort of things. Um, you generally get a little bit of wood spice, probably in a bit of first fill as well, which um, might well be in there when we taste it. Um, and yeah, you know, sort of citrusy elements and, and a creamy butteriness sometimes. So. Let, let, let's get in amongst it and have, have a have a look. Why don't we have a little taste? Cheers. Cheers. Oh, fantastic. So I've got. A, I'm just going to see what a few people are saying online. We've got a lot of people in tonight. Fantastic. So uh, to, from I'm just kind of calling out a few people here that I'm going to. There's, there's messages flying in. So um, Peter Neubert um, from Appleton, Wisconsin. Good evening. Um, from um oh minneapolis as well sarah beckman chasnoff i think sarah's, sarah's been on a tasting before um gordon grant is saying hello robbie um, hello. How you doing? um bram from the netherlands john cowden hello john from greece how are you good to see you or not see you but hear from you um let's get on to some people's initial thoughts on the whiskey um sebastian from germany uh Right, thoughts on the whiskey. Here we go. Um, I have no, oh, Eric, I have no samples, but I choose the Madeira cask. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> um, lemon, uh, so, so it smells of oak. Yeah, John, it does have a little sip, little bit of that for sure. <laughs> Thomas Needhammer, beautiful floral fruity notes, which I think there's, there's a lot of that fruitiness in Glen Um One or two others. Um, coconut for sure, yeah. Um, yeah, there seems to be... Caroline Jones from Blackpool. Hello, good evening. Um, nice start, very good beginning. So there seems to be some really lovely um, thoughts on this whiskey on the nose. I'm going to have a taste of it. I haven't had a taste of this yet. I've had a little sip. I'm going to try a bit more. i just put a bit of water in it. It definitely makes more floral. I'm getting a lot mm -hmm. more kind of like fresh cut flowers. It's very I say it's quite drying. Yeah, somebody said that, you know, it's a very nice hardcore winter whiskey in the comments, but... I would disagree with that. I feel for me anyway, it feels really fresh and summery. And I'm now thinking about this kind of pina colada idea. I think it would work really, really nicely with that. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely. It, it has a lot of um, it has a lot of that sort of slightly tropical fruit element, just a little bit. I get even a hint of a mango coming through more on the taste. Nick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I um, it's like a kind of dried mango peel, kind of papaya. -y, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So Robbie, really in your, yeah, no, absolutely. So Robbie, in your sort of, you know, we don't do lots and lots of bourbon casts. We've done a few single casts. We do use, I, I mean, as a distillery manager, would it be fair to say that bourbon casks would would represent a little bit more generally lighter maturation? So more, not as a rule, but more of that house style coming through. Yeah, it's just a very neat. It's a nature American oak. It 
it tends not to give as much as the European oak. So it is a, a lighter maturation. And this American oak is probably most of the industries, 85% casks mature in Scotland are American oak. Mm. So this is just something quite rare. That's why I've picked that. It's, and it's, it's, a, it's a gentler maturation. You can tell by the color. I mean, it's uh, it's got the longest maturation, but it's the lightest of all the three all the three whiskies would be tasting tonight. Yeah. It's kind of it's woody. It is dry. It's that peppery. I quite like that. You know, a, when I when I was a baby and was, you know and drinking at Balblair Distillery in the warehouse at the age of eighteen, this is this is a, this is the kind of whiskey we were uh, we were liberating, so to speak. And yeah, yeah. It takes me back to a misspent youth. I don't know um, much of it, Gordon, but this I'm sure this is what we were drinking back then. I think I think I, I could imagine your misspent youth was, was bourbon cast whiskey and Tudor crisps, I would imagine. Well, not so the Tudor crisp and then not and then it was more like maybe scampi and haggis or something up there. But, <laughs> yeah. It just Rosalind. That's a really good example of Wayne going in a in a yeah, yeah, bourbon. Absolutely. It's it's superb. It's very uh very easy to drink. Yeah, it is, it is. And you know. Remember, everybody, it's 54.9. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's a high-strength version. So a bit of water will really s allow you to see it even more, I think. And when you add water to whiskey, different flavors come out and up. And Rosalind, what do you think on the taste? Yeah, I really liked it. I, I, same as Blair. I thought it was kind of sort of those kind of dried mango chip things you get. Um, and I know you've said you really do a lot of bourbon barrels, but I thought it tasted distinctly Glengoyne. Like I probably would have maybe gone, I think that is a Glengoyne if I didn't know mm. what it was. Yeah, I mean, I, what I love about bourbon, I'm a big bourbon cask fan. I love the, you know, I, I love all whiskey, but I love bourbon cask because the sweetness is driven more towards the front of the palate. When you drink a European oak sherry cask or European oak cask, it's further at the back and you get, and it almost bypasses the front of the palate and you get that sort of tannic dance across the tongue. And here it's, it's, it's like if you drink bourbon, you know, as in a, you know, a, a bourbon from America. It, before you've even drunk it, your front of your tongue's going, it's going to be really sweet and you're like you know that and it's just a great because made with corn and put in american oak but this i love the way that american oak and particularly the bourbon cast drives the sweetness forward in the mouth mm -hmm. anything else to add ladies and gentlemen i think i think it's interesting with with the with a little bit of water and um, the, those citrus elements really came out on the palate i was getting a bit more of that sort of a kefir lime uh, quite a distinct flavour and, and the florality as well Kate, um, developed. Mm. It reminded me a little bit, not not overly strong, but a little bit of gentian, um, sort of like mm. if you've ever had Sue's, but a very diluted one. You know, it's just yeah. a, just a little whiff yeah. of it, and then quite um, quite drying. Even once the water's out, it's still quite drying um, to the finish, and sort yeah. of a, a, a hint of grassiness uh, in that finish. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Mm. Yeah, there is. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree. Peter Neubert's got a question. Robbie, you might be the best to answer this. Would, do we reveal any of the distilleries we get our bourbon barrels from? Uh, yeah, we, we, we don't hide them. Uh, it can be heaven hell. Uh, this this particular one didn't actually have a name on it. We but we'll get them from you know we'll get them from everywhere. We don't kind of specify that it's always got to be from the same uh, you know the, the same distillery because which whatever the cooperage has in stock at the time when we ask for the bourbon barrels, uh, we do a lot of heaven hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think what's great, and, and, and you know, nowadays is, it, you know, bourbon has moved very much. I mean, if you think where bourbon was 20 years ago as a product, it was a low value, you know, sold in 1.75 liters in America type product. And, and now bourbon as a, as a category as a, is, is, is so premium and it's producing wonderful stuff. And we're going to get those barrels from even 14 years ago, but also all the way through to now. So, I think that the you know the fact that, that that that's bourbon is really on the rise is is fantastic for us as in Scotch, um, for sure. Um, great. So yeah, no, I think um, bourbon barrels are tend to be a little bit more consistent in their maturation as well uh, compared to some of like European oak sherry barrels. Um, you know, uh, the, the, you know, if you get two different sherry bar sherry casks, they can produce two really different colours from the same batch. Is that not fair? They're very uniform. The, yeah, bur the bourbon, room, yeah, yeah. They're almost built within millimeters in size of each other. Mm. You know, they are, they're very yeah. uniform. So you would probably find the, the other 73 casks, barrels that we filled on the day, they would have been very, you might find one which is slightly different, but 
they are they are pretty much as I said uniform and deliver. You can guarantee you know what you're going to get when you fill it on day one. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely, they are very very high. So I think you said it were very high. I'm very impressed by number one. So yeah, it's going to yeah, be very interesting to see. The colours are completely different though, and the other samples. So this is the kind of the odd one out, I guess. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, no. set the, the bar very very high. And, and certainly in terms of um, you know the, the the wood impact, even though it's first full bourbon, you know this doesn't feel and, and despite its age, it doesn't feel sort of overly woody at all. You know this is a fantastic mm. balance of spirit style and, and cask, and it's going to be interesting because I suspect that some of these other examples we've got here might have a bit more you know a bit more of a leaning in the direction of the cask influence. Uh, so I'll be. I'll be interested to see how, uh, if this is sort of the, not a blank canvas, but if this is the, the sort, sort of uh, in the realm of something we might usually expect, I'll be uh, keen to see how this mm. develops over these other casts. Yeah, no, and what I would say to everybody out there, and I hope Rosalind Blair and Chris and Robbie would agree, if you can, don't finish your first whiskey. Don't finish it, leave a little bit there, leave it open, come back to it. That's what blenders do. That's what it, that's what people do in, in when they're when, well. You guys are judging and doing judges. I don't particularly judge, but Rosalind, you've probably done some whiskey judging. I would imagine Blair, you've done it. Chris, you've done it. How would you do? Would, would you recommend that? Definitely. Definitely. Uh, you know, yeah. it, the um, in in my understanding is, and you guys will be able to uh, to, to shed more light on it. But my understanding is uh, is that so there's something called the difference test that's done in blending rooms where you have two samples that are set the same and one that's an odd one out when you're checking for consistency. And while it's obviously not quite the same when every sample is different, having that context from being able to go to something that is wildly different and then back again stimulates the brain and almost allows you to completely come back afresh to a to a dram and um, and really and start a setting. Gonna, sorry, it's also going to be different when we're comparing the rest of them. So when I'm doing judging is I like to have a flight of several because when you're just looking at one in isolation, you don't really have anything to compare that to. So having something to reference to compare against and contrast is a really helpful thing for anyone tasting with, you know, in a home, having two whiskey side by side or in a bar, just having two rather than drinking it, you know, independently on, on its own, it can be harder to kind of pick out the differences between them. And, exactly. and, and Rosalind, I would imagine when you get to a situation that as, as many people may well tonight, oh, I've got two that I really like, but you've actually finished them both, you know, you, you want to go back and just, it might just be the one that tips you into a particular style over the other one. Yeah, definitely. Especially once you've had more than the other, the other three. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. So look, I, w w w I'm going to leave my first whiskey with a little bit of water in which is position one. I think we should move on to whiskey number two. Robbie, whiskey number two. Can you talk us through this cask because this is a this is quite a different different type of cask yeah this is a port pipe uh, it's cask number 38 2005 so it's actually just a wee bit younger than the bourbon this was this was filled on the 19th of january 2005 uh, the original contents of this one was 404 liters so this is massive this this is a huge cask you're one of the biggest casks we've we've ever filled here at Glengoyne. Uh, but we only we only filled three of these and we've still got the three. Right. So we've three and we've got all three. So number 36, 37 and 38 were filled, three port pipes. And uh, there's a, uh, yeah, they're very rare. This, this particular one, it has a wee bit of old stenciling on it, which uh, has the word colita, which means harvest. And from 1977. Oh, <laughs> yeah. so this this would have been uh, a cask that would have had port in it for perhaps almost 30 years. Now that kind of that's that's one of two things. That can mean that uh, because it's had the port in it for so long, it's actually took a lot of the goodness out of the actual cask itself. Yeah. So you could. You could expect a, a, a cask that could be slightly exhausted. That could be one of the problems when you've got something that's had a long maturity of something else rather than just a seasoning as most casks are in Scotland. So I was kind of wary of looking at this one with Steph because we thought it, because it's such an old cask, this, this cask is, is a very, very old cask. It could have had nothing left to give, the, the maturation could have been tired, the, the evaporation, the angel share could have been very low. That's a, a sign of, a, of an exhausted cash. You don't get a lot of 
a lot of evaporation. But this one, considering it being such a big cask, we lost 23.74%. Right. And that for a for a port pipe for such a big cask, that is actually quite a, a healthy loss. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that's a sign that's that uh, the port didn't take everything out. It, it kept something in for us tonight, but it left enough of the oak in there for the whiskey to actually extract the mm -hmm. oak tannins to extract colours as well from the oak and also the port flavours. So this is the first time I've tasted this one. I know it's in the warehouse, but I haven't actually tasted it as of yet. Well, neither have I. None, none of us have. So this is uh, we don't we don't have a pre. None of us have got any sort of preconceptions because we have not tasted these before, no. everybody. So we are we are doing it as you are doing it. So so um so just for anybody who wants to know and 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 port pipes is the pretty much the biggest cask you use in Scotch whiskey. Um, then you go into the sherry butts, down to punchins, hogsheads, um, and then into sort of barrels, and then some people go smaller casks than that. But that's generally the range of sort of sizes of casks. And port pipes have a very unique shape as well. So you can spot a port pipe, very tall casks, thin at the ends, wide in the middle, um, a bit like me. Um, and um, they produce a really, <laughs> they produce a really, uh, a really, obviously, we've heard the history of the cast. So, so let's get our noses into this at uh, 55.6. Look at what, look at the color of that. Isn't that fabulous? Isn't that amazing? It's stunning. And if, and, and, you know, the other thing poor is, and you guys, I'd love to get your thoughts, but because you've tasted so much whiskey, but you normally see port used in finishing, really, do you not, rather than full maturation? And that's what makes this very unique and very rare. You don't see a lot of whiskies fully matured in port. I mean, if you think of PX casks, port casks, um, other type, you know, those are generally finishes, you know, generally casks used for finishing. But to have a fully matured Glengoyne in port is really, really exciting. We have yeah. tinkered around with ruby port in the past as well, Gordon. But right. this one would have been a tawny, because of its age, this would have been a tawny port. Right. Okay. Exactly. That's quite interesting. Because I, I'm not I don't know as much about port as I do about sherry. Um, so that's quite interesting in terms of it, you know, obviously what was in it is crucial to an element of the flavours. Mm -hmm. so. And, and being a Kalita, it means that it would have been an, ex it would, an exceptional harvest as well. You know, this is this is something oh. that they identified early on. This is this is great wine, and this is going to take long aging in caskets. You know, it, as you say, Robbie, it's a it's a very old tawny port um, mm -hmm. from a from all from one harvest, all uh, you know, seen identified early as very high quality, and it makes mm. it a very different beast from uh, from a from a ruby port cask from a. Port, Ruby Port production cask, and certainly a, a world away from a from a seasoned cask. And mm. to your point, Gordon, there's there's a lot of port cask finished whiskies out there that sometimes are not quite there in terms of the integration. Whereas you can tell already from this that the, the spirit character, the distillery character, is integrated phenomenally well with with this old port cask. It's um, full of sort of lingonberry, licorice, mm. dark chocolate, yeah. a little bit of clove. It's superb. Yeah, no. Well, let's get some people's comments. What, Rosalind, what are you picking up on the nose here? Um, yeah, licorice. I thought maybe cherry, and for some reason, wine gums. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I get cherries. I'm getting a lot of, like, almost if you could imagine, if you allow me on this bizarre metaphor path, I'm going to go down. But if you imagine, like, premium versions of, like, favourite kind of chocolate bars, so, like, a premium crunchy bar, with like really good high quality chocolate, really lovely honeycomb, but also like curly whirlies. Like I don't know if like a Michelin star chef made a curly whirly bar or like poppets, which were like <laughs> kind of, do you remember poppets? Like chocolate covered raisins, but not with like yeah, crap oh, yeah, chocolate, yeah. with like really nice good, chocolate. really high quality yeah. chocolate. That's, I'm getting a lot of that on the nose. Well, just to take that to another level, and I hate it, but I've just nosed it. And, and I only, I'm sure I just got a bit of Turkish delight. So that's mm. quite weird. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But, but no, but like a kind of like fries, that. not not like a, a genuine Turkish Turkish delight, like a fries Turkish delight. You mean? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The chocolate yeah. and the jelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's definitely just, that. Just just hit that. That's really good. Yeah, uh, Robbie, what I mean, you've picked a belter here. I have to say, this is absolutely fantastic. I can't think of many. I mean, I really can't think of many 
single casks or whiskies that are, I mean, there probably is quite a lot in terms of other distilleries doing them, but I just seem to seem to see port finishes a lot more, obviously, as, as you would expect, as you would expect. Um, what is everybody saying out in leather, chocolate, caramelized chocolate raisins? Yeah, you were sort of mentioning that. <clears throat> um, kind of weird on the nose at first, but this is just stunning. What a cast from Dominic. Uh, what else have we got out here? Um, it's like breathing thick treacle, but in a good way. <laughs> That's how I want to go. I, I like that. <laughs> yeah. How did it go? He was breathing thick treacle. Um, oh, it's an absolute beauty. Um, pomegranate molasses interesting yeah 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 so I, yeah I, you know what i'd agree with that that's a really good that's a really mm -hmm. good shout out the pomegranate yeah, that, is a good molasses. Shout. that, that yeah, slight yeah. Uh, that slight earthiness and along with that sharp berry sweetness that you get from uh, from pomegranate molasses for sure that's from distilled consultants limited ah well that, it go. sounds like they should know what they're talking about <laughs> it does sound like they should know what they're talking about um robbie what are you thinking on the nose isn't it beautiful it is it's this funny. It's absolutely yeah. stunning, and I agree with all those comments. It's got the the rich chocolate. But it's also got this, you know, the lighter, sweeter chocolate that Blair was talking about there, and the molasses and cherries from Rosalind. I mean, the first thing I got was like dark, dark cherries. It's uh, it's a, it's just a stunning on the nose. Absolutely, yeah, it's absolutely stunning. It's sticking it's to the side of the glass, awesome. nice as well. It's just beautiful color, beautiful color. Yeah. So I'm gonna have a little little taste of this, yeah, everybody. Cheers. Mm. Oh, that is amazing. Wow. Oh, it is thick. It is gentle, spicy. It is very, very mouth feely. It's got that. I'm sort of getting that. It's sort of trying to stick my jaws together. It's oh, that is. It's, a, a, it's I'm also just like having a like really lovely chocolate, like a really luxury mm -hmm. chocolate. Mm -hmm. You just want to keep chewing it, and every yeah. kind of breath you take in, it just kind of pops to different bit of flavors. Really amazing. Getting and a bit of cola cube on the finish. Cola, you know, there's the a little bit of cola cube. There is, there is for definitely. sure. It doesn't. I mean, your tongue just tingled. Yeah. Everywhere, it, I, couldn't, I couldn't even get a point that the tongue that just didn't wasn't tingling when I was drinking this. It was just amazing impact of that whiskey. And 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 my immediate reaction, if I was drinking, if I was given this in a bar and I wasn't going to, we're not doing it for this evening. I wouldn't want to rush to add a bit of water to that for me at the mm -hmm. moment. That, no. It's just, it seems I'm going to, I'm going to add a drop of water for mm -hmm. it, but. For me, as it is, it does not seem fifty-five point six percent. It seems no. like forty-eight. You know, very easy drinking. Yeah, it just goes very easy. It doesn't. And I, it's just I, so balanced and integrated as well. It, it, the flavors it just so really balanced. But there's still, you can still pick up a bit of that Glengoyne in there for sure, which is great after fifteen mm -hmm. years in a port cask. So, um, um, and I'm getting that, and I'm still tasting it. You know, where I haven't had a sip for over a minute, two minutes. And I've still got this mouth going on at the back. It's just flavors coming through. Um, yep. uh, Neil McIver's complaining, Robbie, that you've got a bigger dram than everybody else. <laughs> it's exactly the same. Exactly the same. <laughs> he's, 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 he, he nipped down to the warehouse earlier today and just uh, filled, up his, filled up his He's been sipping that all afternoon. Uh, AKW. It's the perspective from the glass. Yeah, exactly. And also you're... You're quite small, so it makes the glass look quite big. <laughs> AKW, my, my mouth just exploded. Um, uh, Alistair Matir, another that absolutely does not need water. Very personal. I've just had a fly um, drone in my glass. <laughs> really? <laughs> it must be good. <laughs> sure. You can see. But it literally oh, does that. like kind of just. <laughs> that, so that's it a protein. And crunch. No, I think you'll so have to be sure to vote for the fly. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so that so Blair, that fly has been bashing his head off your window for the last three hours, and he's just gone stuff this. I'm going yeah, in a big it's just special way. Right but now <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna not finish it because there's a fly. <laughs> like no, no, just pick, pick it out with some chopsticks. Is it one um, of those fruit flies? You know, it's a fly, yeah. Yeah, I've got one of them flying about as well. So I think the same there's a lot of them around. It's a lot. I am going to add a drop of water to this, just to see how things develop with it. Can you can you be can you guinea pig and tell us how it goes with water? Because I'm I'm I am reluctant because it's just so lovely as it is. 
I'm not, yeah. I'm not putting water to this one. I'm not. I'm only doing it so you know. Not everybody will for we'll science. Right there. For science. So for science. Here we go. We're taking exciting. one for the team, and we're going to see if it's worth it. Because if it if it's worth it, then I'll do it to you. And if not, I'm happy as it is. It's a fantastic example of when port cask is done correctly and well integrated. You know, it's not you so many of them that are out there. You sort of get the flavor of the of the distillery character, and then afterwards you get this 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 port flavor, and it yeah. feels almost like you're taking a sip of of each at the same time. And it, it you know, and, and you can very distinctly go, well, that tastes like port, and that tastes like whiskey. Whereas this is this has come together as one fantastic whole, which is a uh, you know not as common as uh, as one might like when it comes to port mm -hmm. cards, for sure. Mm -hmm. It's definitely spicier okay. with the water in it. Um, it's still distinctive as it was before. I didn't put that much water in it, but it, the, the overriding sort of, it, it almost feels stronger than it did if it, when I didn't put water in it. Still beautiful, but I would, I would definitely, for me, I prefer it without water. But that's, you know, that's Thank you for that. I'll leave it as it is. Oh. <laughs> But it's I'm, an I'm going to have to go in the warehouse on uh, Monday and try number 36 and 37 now. Yeah, 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 yeah. For, yeah, science. No, really. for science. For I science. I think I'm at the distillery on Monday. I'm yeah, pop around. <laughs> around. Rosalind, any, any sort of final thoughts on this one? No, it just, it's really good. I, I agree with what's been said. It's, it's, you wouldn't know the strength. It doesn't, doesn't oh. feel too strong. It's not mm -hmm. too spicy. It, yeah, it's like Chris said, it's really well-rounded and... Yeah, really good. And and it's split opinion. There's people out there, there are a lot of people absolutely loving it. A, couple, a lot of people saying, no, the bourbon is still my favorite. And that is the beauty of whiskey. It is not, there, you know, if you like the bourbon, you like the bourbon. I've always said that. And then it reminds me of some, some very interesting stories when people have always gone, you know, when people slide in a, a very, in a, in a whiskey tasting. It was that, I think that story of putting in a, a black bow more halfway through a whiskey tasting and uh yeah you know people's perceptions of it are very different depending on how you talk about a whiskey but uh it's all about your your thoughts and all those lucky people that have got a a, a tasting pack should uh should just decide uh should just decide one one great comment here from Susanna and um, maybe Gordon doesn't like it water how is it with a fly though <laughs> it's excellent. It's actually added a bit of extra character to it than more than I was expecting. And maybe this is a new trend. They're talking about how we're going to have to change to eating bugs and eating, you know, different proteins. Maybe, maybe this is a new garnish. Maybe the it's the next, it's the next world great whiskey hasn't pairing, thought about it. Yeah, 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 it yeah, yeah. This will be it. Absolutely. You're going to have a fruit fly rim on your on your uh, port cask old fashioned. Excellent. Excellent. Bit, uh, yeah, so what are you off to? What are you off to do tonight? I've got the insect and whiskey pairing. We're looking forward to that. Um, um, Robbie, yeah, there's about six. First. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this is a, this is a new business. We're all in. Robbie, there's six or seven people coming to Glengoyne on Monday. Um, there's there's a lot of people live near Glengoyne who are going to be there on Monday as well because they want to go to the, the the warehouse with you. Oh well, yes. Let's just form an audience. We'll we'll go in there. There's a. We, we actually uh, re-gauged the cask before we uh, took all the whiskey out. So if we do select that one, I'm pleased to say there's 789 bottles waiting. Whoa. I mean, yeah, but, that's a that, is a that is a consideration, of course, from everybody, because we're going to get very different amounts of bottles from different casks. So um, it, it, it's a very fair point, of course, and certainly from a, a bourbon hogshead um or bourbon barrel? Is it a barrel? Bourbon barrel? Um, yeah, you would expect 192 from the barrel. 192. So there's a big disparity a big in terms thing. of uh, the casks. So I think it's time we moved on to whiskey number three. Um, so we've gone from that light, strong <laughs> bourbon, which I think we all agreed with a drop of water was superb, um, to the port cask with, uh, um, I think, it would just as was, is fantastic. Robbie, cask number three, cask C. Yeah. What is what, what what do we have here? Yeah, this is uh, this is a, a refill, but it's uh, an ex sherry, so it's a, a beautiful wee sherry hoggies, one of the smallest sherry hogsheads I've seen. Uh, but you think kind of refills, you they've, they've had the day. You think they've got very little to give, but when Steph and I tried this one, we didn't even think twice. 
We just mm. thought this was such an amazing cask. Uh, it's, well, what is it? It's cask 2422 of 2006, filled on yep. the 15th of September. So it's, it's almost 14 years old. Another couple of weeks, and it'll be a 14-year-old. And it was small. It only had 148.2 litres in it, which is very small for a Hogshead. And uh, we only had 18. And this is the last one. So this is the last one we've got in the warehouse of this particular style. It had, uh, the Angels had a good go at it as well. It took about 37.1%, the greedy little sods. Uh, so it's had, it's had good maturation. But it's still got good colour for refill. So you can see some, the, the previous maturation didn't take everything out from the actual mm. original one. So it still left some of the colour in there. You see that by the sherry, the, uh, the colour of it's quite dark. Not as dark as the board pipe, but for a refill yeah. for just 13 years, that's that's doing very well. Yeah, no, absolutely. So this well, one is um, really sitting there, what is it? It's the strongest, 58.9%. Um, is it that American or European? Or? It'll be European. European, okay, just checking. Because um, that's a big influence, obviously, in the uh, in the, the seasoned cask world of, of American and European oaks. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, what I've always noticed is, and, and, and I remember hearing it on a, on a, on to Martin, who, who did some very nice sherry, sherry stories. They were saying, and I think you'd probably agree with this, Robbie, that when, um, you know, when you get that first, fill, you get, you get that color comes out of that oak really quite quickly. Lots of color in that first fill refills, refill sherries can be really quite low in color, can't they? Depending on mm -hmm. how long you've, how long you've used it for first fill. And, and there's that great display at Glengoyne when you visit Glengoyne, which really shows the maturation and color and how color comes into whiskey. Mm. So you get a lot more in the first 10 years than you do in the last 20 years of a whiskey. And, and that's a really, really important thing to remember. And, and, and it's something I always say to people when people, as they do, judge whiskey by color uh, without knowing casks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that has got a beautiful nose on it. Yeah, I can't, I can't, really. there's something on that nose and I cannot pinpoint what it is, but it is. I'm getting yeah, really nice. There's a nice heat. There's, you know, this is the first one we're really starting to like smell the intensity of the drink. But it's a nice for me. I'm getting a lot of kind of Sichuan pepper spice, like a nice mm -hmm. kind of peppery spice. But I, I'm feeling very Christmassy all of a sudden, just like being yep. in August. You know, I'm getting a lot of Christmas. You know, you know, I don't know what they're called. You know, when you get an orange, you used to be as a kid, you get an orange and you stuff it with clothes and you hang it on your Christmas tree. So you get that kind of fresh orange citrus, but with a kind of spicy cloviness. It's yeah. got all of that for me. It's really nice on the nose. No, there's a lot of whiskey chat out. There's a lot of whiskey chat out there for sure. Sorry, a lot of Christmas chat. Lit my nose up like an Xmas tree, says Gibby. Um, mm -hmm. I like that. Um, uh, what else have we got out here? Um, next, oh, ooh, refill hog said. So, uh, no, we're down here. We're down here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Cask C is not too much sherry. I like it. So yeah, there's a lot less of that first fill influence, that European oak influence that, that Rosalind, you know, if you if that going going 21 year old is all European oak or 25 is European oak, you know, you, but you know, you definitely taste that European oak flavors in those whiskeys because European oak can be quite a thick maturation, quite a heavy maturation. Um, what do you think of this refill on the nose? Um, yeah, I've, I've Think Christmas kind of Christmas pudding, some kind mm -hmm. of stone fruit. I'm not quite sure. Maybe like a probably date or something. Something like to go mm -hmm. along the lines of like a Christmas pudding. But same as you, there's something I'm not quite. I can't know. pick up what it is. I haven't worked it's it out yet. Strawberry, strawberry laces. Plum. I'm getting. Strawberry I'm getting, laces. Yeah, that's. Stra it, yeah. I'm getting. I'm getting like Terry's chocolate orange, but at, for, and, and strawberry laces. At first, first I thought it might be those like little cherry lips sweets that you got, the ones that mm -hmm. look like lips. But I think I think it's actually more in the strawberry laces camp. Yes. Uh, yeah. I Come thought some that. sweetie like sherbet or some something. Yeah. Something like from the past. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely lots of old, sweet, old really sweet shop in here. Lots of polished surfaces and things, <laughs> oh, jars. <laughs> Robbie, what, what, what do you think? Uh, yeah, it's like just like in an old, old style sweet shop. You know, a lot of boiled sweets mm. in there. It's you got, yeah. you got a wee bit of the old marmalade, the civil marmalade, which you get with uh, from the previous mm. occupant of the cask. Uh, there's, there's a kind of style of old traditional Glengoyne in there, maturation, but it's not as big as normal. I'm lucky enough with a, with a few uh, other people to have a cask 
in the warehouse here, in the same warehouse in warehouse eight, and it's it's a really tough. So there's about five or six of us. We got we have shared ownership, and it's just a year younger than this, so it's from 2007. So hopefully that's on a similar journey to this one. You know, this this is just a very good, very good refill cask. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, I, I get asked a lot when I travel around the world, not so much, obviously, at the moment, unfortunately, but I get asked a lot is, is you know, why are refills, a lot of people think refills are inferior. They're not inferior. No, no. They just provide a different style of whiskey. Is that not correct? Yeah, they just uh, tend to offer a little bit less because some of the, the first full are too intense, the flavors for many people. That's why blends yeah. came into existence as well because the, the single malts are too, too intense for many people. So a blend kind of calms it down. And I think, I think a refill is a similar kind of beast, and often they are. But this one just, it wasn't, it didn't just yeah. sleep away for the last 13 years doing very little. This has took so much out of the cask because that cask still had a lot to give. I imagine the cask was probably, the first fill was probably only five or six shares, maybe seven. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't have been a long maturation to have so much out of this yeah no i mean I, you know i i, I absolutely remember you know the I was, who was i listening to it was, it was a very very interesting discussion on the importance of refill casks it was fabulous akw what sherry was in the cask originally i would assume we're talking all Rosso sherry here we we wouldn't know we wouldn't know but i imagine okay. it would be yeah 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 certainly doesn't can we have a taste yeah i'm pretty sure yeah. it is yeah sorry sorry yes you can have a taste sorry yes <laughs> We're all waiting wait for me. Don't wait night. for me. Okay. Okay. In, in. I, I was rude. I just tucked straight in. I didn't. I didn't wait until until the uh, the host began. Too greedy. Mm. Wow. Oh, like no, I expected at all. Completely. No. Like, not in a bad way, but completely different to the nose. It's got a lot of lovely heat. And that's this is peppery. the strongest whiskey. This you can tell. Oh yeah, mm. it packs a punch. But in a, it's, there's still enough there. You're not just getting burned. You, know, you get that kind of heat and that kind of chili, pep peppery kind of dish one pepper spice, but then the fruit kind of comes through. So you do get that really lovely kind of sweet berries. Kind of, I'm getting yeah. almost like kind of like brambles with like a kind of balsamic glaze or something. Yeah. There's a kind of balsamic y, not in a mm, negative sense of it being vinegar, but like a sweet balsamic. Mm -hmm. I'm really getting nice. that sort of uh, demerara sugar, that you know, that brown sugar that sticks together and mm. moves when you. What's that? It's not demerara. What is that? Muscovado. Really? Yeah, that mm. sort of sugar. I'm getting a bit of that on this, mm. on the taste. Um, really smooth. Well, what you notice with this compared to is, is it's actually, if you think of thickness of whiskey, the bourbon was the thinnest. This is a little bit thicker than that. The, the port is the thickest of them all. Mm. For me, this is, you know, this is um, when you when you taste a first fill sherry, you notice that thickness. But I like the fact this has got a little bit of that thinner style on it, which is great. Oh, nice and dry at the end. Bit of tannins mm. coming through. Sort of that, like uh, like red like red apple skin kind of that uh, that 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 mm -hmm. slight dryness yeah, and, that you get from and, from, and, from apple skin is. And there's no doubt that there'll be a lot of Glengoyne in there. We know there's apples and and pears in there that, that that actually become a little bit redder apples as Glengoyne gets a bit older. And then when you get into very old Glengoyne, very tropical fruity. Um, but that 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 is oh, I really really really. Are we like speaking that, about that Washington red apples here? <laughs> I've got a, a fascination and a love of Washington red apples, and I definitely get that. And it kind of almost like those American candy apples. It's that kind right. of like right. yeah, that sweetness. Definitely. Rosalind, what are you? What are you? What are you? What are you noticing about this? And you, you must be able to come out with some wonderful flavors and things from your food and drink <laughs> days that you can you can associate with this whiskey. I was just going to say it's quite lively. <laughs> it's quite lively. It is quite lively. I think this may. May work with a drop of water, but again, that's not not necessary. It takes it's the water very, well. Very, 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 yeah, yeah, it takes the water well. Water. It takes, it takes water. water well. Okay, I'm yeah. going to try that. Very nice. I think so. I was going to ask Blaine if the apple is a red delicious apple. Is that what your Washington red apple yes. is? Yes, Washington red delicious is specifically what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm still a pink lady. Type yeah, of guy. me too. Are, are you? Oh, I didn't know you. Yeah. Were. Um, I've got <laughs> you yeah, what Gordon and I are both in the Pink Lady camp. Yeah, no, I'm a Pink Lady fan for sure, definitely. Uh, um, fair enough. <laughs> mm. Oh, now, 
Cool. Okay. I, I prefer this with water. This yeah. works for me with water really well. The nose oh. opens up much more. It's actually, it, you know, the, the nose is great without the water, but it, but it, it, it's still a little bit closed. And once the water gets in there, it completely opens up. And stuff like the other thing I find is it takes the slight spiciness out of it and adds by adding a little bit more creamier mouthfeel almost. Mm. Uh, and it and it just seems a little bit better, better feel in the mouth with with a drop of water. I'm getting almost those um, I can't remember which, one of the mainstream chocolate sweets that's got like a strawberry filling. Do you know what I mean? Like a strawberry cream chocolate. I think when roses, the kind of thing you get in a roses quality, tin. Quality yeah. street. Yeah, it's that kind of, but it's that kind of like strawberry chocolatey. Yeah, creamy. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. that. If actually, once the water's in there, that strawberry laces we were talking about earlier, that opens up into sort of roses tin when you're opening at Christmas time and you're opening mm -hmm. up the tin and you've got all the different fondant flavors in amongst with the uh, with the milk yes, chocolate. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. Robbie, how are you enjoying that? I can feel the blood starting to rush to my cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> all four of them. It's, uh, it's, you get a lot of bang for your buck with that one. Yeah, you do. You do. Mm, I do. It's uh, it's good. It's just that's one of these Friday night whiskies. It's uh, very it's very good. It's peppery notes coming through from the wood, and yeah, you've got some sweetness, but the sweetness doesn't really come through too strong on the on, on the on the palate there. It's it's just as I would class it a very good refill cask. Yeah, I yeah, look it's, it's absolutely. Very good. It's it's not more it's not more not less than that. It's just a very good refill cask. It goes yeah, quite no. fresh, sort of fresh plums on the on yeah. the when it finish on the finish. Mm. It's definitely that that fresh plum plum fre uh, flesh flavor. Uh, try saying that after. <laughs> Can you say that again? Fresh plum plum flesh. We'll get there. Like <laughs> the tannins from grape skin, you know, you, you yeah, chew exactly. it and it keeps mm. going. It's got a very long after flavor. Yeah, yeah it has. Really, really. I, yeah, it has. Good. Yeah. It has for refill. It has got a lot of. I'm still tasting it. It's a really, really pleasant finish. I really, really. I can see why you chose that one. How many bottles does this one yield? Yeah, this is uh, this is 223 bottles. We would expect from this one. Okay. That's okay. okay. That's all right. That's it's okay. If you go back to the previous one, it's the the, the difference is incredible. Well, that. Why do why do we actually? Yeah. Why don't we go back to the first three and see how we get on? So. Um, well, I'm going to go back to the bourbon now. It's been there for t 20 oh, yeah. years. Right? Quite a lot, the bourbon, yeah. Oh, totally. There's some really mm -hmm. strong. I'm getting a lot more floral notes now. Quite yeah. a lot more mm -hmm. I mean, noticeably sort of petals and that sort of coming through a little bit. Oh. Very different from when I put it down. And that's again, if you go back and forward through a through a when you really want to do a whiskey tasting properly, you always go back and forward. I remember doing a whiskey tasting in Russia. I was telling somebody about this the other day in Russia, in Kazan, probably about eight years ago, and uh, 30 of, of, of Kazan's finest businessmen and 30 um, ran, random other people's, me, a translator. And the front row, I started speaking, and the first gentleman just picked up the first, there's four whiskeys, picked one, two, three, four, got up and walked out. It's like, okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, it was quite an interesting tasting. But I was about to say, before we go any further, can we move back and forward? But he, he clearly had made up his mind. He wanted to do what he wanted to do. That's fine. That's fine. But, uh, yeah, this bourbon has... Um, oh, can I just say that my fly has now died in the in what's left of the bourbon? Have you oh. had fruit fly? Oh, my yeah, Lord. So everyone's bothering me all night I and it's died. It. So, so that's a vote. So we have a vote for the bourbon and a vote for the port. <laughs> yeah, from so the fly. Also, Multiple use, you can leave the bottles open and use it as a fruit fly catcher as well. Yeah, yeah, you can do. Yeah. <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> wow, there's a fruit fly, fruit fly thing going on. So let's, yeah. So the bourbon, what do we? Uh, it's really changed a lot. I, I'm going to have a little taste of it again. See how the, see what we're doing with the bourbon. I get a little more kind of like icing sugar. I get the petals that you mentioned as well. But it's kind of like mm -hmm. petals that have been covered in icing sugar, which is like yeah. There's just there was a. Have, there was a but, yeah. It was a note that was not there when I put it down. Yes. And now it is. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. 
I, I'm, I'm sorry. I've I've jumped onto the port. Uh, well, I'm going to go back to the port. While, yeah. while we were while we were with the port last time, I for, once we'd added a little bit of um, a, a, just a little splash of water, I started getting these kind of coffee notes coming out, and I wasn't sure. I was mm. like, is this sort of coffee beans? Yeah. Is it is it more like the the camp coffee, like the stuff that comes in the bottle, the sort of hickory coffee, what, or is it sort of coffee coffee cream chocolates? And I think I've settled in the the sort of coffee cream chocolates arena. My, for, it is fresh yeah, note. It's I think that coffee. Yeah, definitely. Very, right. But that wasn't really that wasn't there before. There was a kind of tobacco y something there before. But definitely just having yeah. it sit there, that's just appeared. Yeah, it was definitely in that sort of like uh, you know, the, the flavoured pipe tobacco arena for for a little bit mm -hmm. at first, along with the leatheriness, but definitely with the with a bit of time I think it's definitely developed into coffee. Mm -hmm. Well, so if you, ladies and gentlemen, if you have these whiskies at home and you're doing what we're doing, great. Um and do do keep a little bit so when you make your final decision after we've had the final cast, you know, and it's probably going to be between two for most people, um, then decide just you know take that last sort of nose that last taste. So I know I'm just a bit conscious of time, everybody. So we're going to move on to the final whiskey. Um, now this is a pretty pretty rare rare cast, Robbie. So talk us through this one, please. This is uh, I'm excited by this. Yeah, Cast D. So uh, okay. this is Cask 911, 2007, Madeira. Uh, this was a seasoned cask compared to the, the port one, which was a lifelong port. So this would have been seasoned for perhaps 18 months with Madeira. Then okay. came to us in uh, April 2007. We filled it on the 25th of April. Uh, the original contents of this cask is a hoggy, so it's a reasonable size hoggy. It was 159.1 litres. Um, again, the engines had a good go at it. It took 27.72%, so we're left with 115 litres, which gives us 200, well, uh, quite a healthy 287 bottles in this one. So, yeah, so this is, again, it's a 13-year-old. We only have two remaining in the warehouse. We filled about five of these. We only have two left. Okay. Anyway, not, not many of these get filled. No. And again, in the world of whiskey, pretty rare casks that we see, Madeira casks. We think, you know, 90% or 80% of whiskies are bourbon, sherries, different types of sherries, sometimes port. Madeira, pretty rare. And, and again, generally used for finishing. So full maturation should be really interesting in this. Um, Colour is, again, just fabulous. So... So Madeira obviously comes from Madeira. I mean, it's not it's nothing special. Is there anything special about how Madeira wines are made? That makes them. What's the difference between Madeira and anybody know particularly? Apart from it comes from Madeira, it's just a fortified wine, isn't it? Yeah, it's a fortified wine that's got right. a couple of things that that you know that that are, that are how it's how it's sort of made in Madeira. That's really all it is. It, it's a sort of it's the difference between cognac and, and Armagnac. It's the difference between port and Madeira, um, for sure. So, yeah, interesting. So, what are we picking up on this? This is 56.7% alcohol. So, oh, gosh, it's got an interesting nose. Mm. Again, oh. it kind of reminds me of, like, old, old school sweets, like Sir Plums or a Coke float. Remember them? <laughs> Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get kind of and custard thing now because you said the yeah. sweet old, old school sweets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think you're on. The, I think you're on the money with a little bit of that rhubarb there, Blair. Yeah, no, there is. What What are them? What are those sweets that are very hard that are mental? Uh, hoik balls. It's almost uh, you know hoik balls. It's kind of weird to say. Never, I've never <laughs> had a okay. hoik ball. Um, you've got to have a hoik ball and try a hoik ball. You love it. Okay, I'll remember that. This is, uh, this is it's that. There's, there's definitely a lot of leatheriness to it. Um, I'm getting I'm getting yeah. plenty of that. I think you're you're right with that with that sort of there, there was some there's some sort of tart smell <laughs> in there, and it's mm -hmm. yeah, rhubarb's the way that you. What was that, Robin? I get that as pineapple chunks. You know that mm -hmm. tartness coming through. Mm. Now, and I'm, getting, I'm getting quite a lot of apricot. Like, I think it's, I think it's probably like apricot um, chunks in, uh, in in tinned apricots, mm -hmm. sort of that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, no, definitely. Oh, that's really, really good. I'm. Uh, it's, you can see this has got a thickness to it, and I, you know, 
if you look at the legs on it, it's a bit like the port in that way. It's going to have thick legs. It's it's a it's a it's a thick thick whiskey. This um, I'm going to have to try it. I'm going to have to try it. Kind of a peaches in syrup vibe going on with it as well. Yeah. Mm. Wow. It's almost like a kind of peach smell, but I'm getting a lot of that peaches. Mm. It is a peach. It's, a, it's like a, it's like a cooked it's peach. peach. It's like a yeah. It's a, it's not a raw peach. It's a it's all like mm. overripe cooked peach or it's an overripe poached. poached peach. Yeah, poached Absolutely. in Madeira almost. Yeah, poached. Like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that that is. But it's got That's a dryness good. to it. It's got wow. a very different profile to the port, but it's got a slight bitterness in a in a pleasant mm. way to it. Yeah. There's a slight, there's a pleasant acidity to it as well, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, definitely. Banana. Sorry, was it? Anyone getting banana, like sort of baked banana, like banana bread? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Kind of, they, yeah. you know what? I, 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 for me, it's more of like a foam banana sweet <laughs> kind oh, of vibe oh, going on. Yeah, you're gonna have foam bananas. <laughs> and again, if you think, if you think of the, if you think of the whiskey world, full, fully matured in Madeira, rare, rare, rare really rare rare so i mean the whole thing i think for people that got the kits i mean to get the chance to taste the same distilleries you know output from roughly the same years but the only variable that's been across the whole is the cat it's a yeah. really exciting thing to get the teeth you know in its purest rawest form so mm. those that managed to get the kit got super lucky and those that didn't whatever we end up choosing tonight they're definitely in for a win. Whatever comes out tops, because and they're all and I now have really a fruit good. fly trying to go into mine. So I oh, think I my fruit fly is going for the Madeira. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it, it's it's interesting. It's interesting because I, I did notice about a few minutes ago, Blair has got another fruit fly coming in for something. He flew across the screen, <laughs> kind of waving out of the way. Yeah, I was trying but to keep the, the I, like that, but... <laughs> I've I've got one somewhere, but he's not landed in my whiskey yet. Robbie, no flies on you, mate. <laughs> You and I often shower, Gordon. That's probably the difference between our <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. The oh. um, I think the fruit flies are trying to rig the vote here. <laughs> Le Chiffre, wow. is it possible to buy the whole port cask? <laughs> well, let's see if it wins, and then you might be able to buy some. But uh, um. Yeah, I, that is that is really interesting. It's so different. I really well. like that. Yeah. Has anybody added water to it? I'm going to add a drop of water to it. No, that's in the drop. So, so would this have it. been an, an amazing? Presumably, this would this have been an, an American oak cask that was seasoned with the Chris, Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I like that with water. Brings out more the bananas from the American oak, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I really like that with water. Um, whereas I didn't like the port with water. I, I, I think the refill was good with water and the bourbon was great with water. So there you go. Complete mix. Everybody will be different, but very interesting. Mouth-watering dram. It delivers a hell of a lot more on the palate than it does on the nose. Fair enough. Um, not sure adding water... With a risk adding water to D. Well, oh, to D. Yeah, yeah, you can. I think water works for D for me anyway. Yeah, it just it brings works, out yeah. a bit more freshness. I get a lot more kind of um, kind of like rose water now, like a kind of like a kind of Turkish delight kind of note to it, but kind I'm, of with some spices, spice market. I'm, and with yeah. that water, I'm getting a bit more vanilla coming through. That you know, little hints of vanilla just in it, but not not vanilla ice cream. More just sort of that sort of. Mm. I don't know. It's very hard to put my. Almost vanilla, a slightly flavoured vanilla custard. Weird. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but yeah, that sort of note. Creme anglaise. Creme anglaise, possibly. Yes, <laughs> that's the word you would expect. Custard. <laughs> custard. It's, it's, it's a lot better than custard. Um, yeah, it sounds absolutely. better than custard. Yeah, definitely. So uh, let's get some comments in from everybody out there. Rhubarb and custard with a pickled spider. Interesting. Nice. Um, you're going to have a bottle of all of these uh, now, anyway. They are ready. Okay, yeah, I think everybody wants to get all four of these. It's not going to happen, yeah. unfortunately. Um, who else have we got? Um, I, I, I hate you all. The port was an easy win. Oh, interesting. We've got somebody who's got a port fan. So we're, we're, we've, we've tasted all four. Now, I think it would be – I think maybe there's a lot of people at home thinking –
maybe what what am I gonna what am I gonna vote? Um, I'm not gonna ask you your favourites yet, but I think what might be an idea, it might be an idea to see where we are currently on the voting. Oh, um, so oh. here we go. We're gonna see what the votes are <laughs> so far. Ooh. Can we get a drum roll? Oh, oh heavy wow. on the okay. Madeira. Okay, so the Madeira is winning currently. So let's, we'll come back to that. The votes are still open. So you, please get ready. If you, if you really are port fans, vote for the port. If you really like the bourbon, vote for that. So um, now's your time. I think maybe a good point now to again, go through all four of them as a sort of, and then maybe we can decide on the ones we have as our favorites. Is that fair? Or we can maybe we should do that after voting. Oh, it's closed. Let's go back and go through them one more time. So, the bourbon. Oh yeah, yeah. It's now got it's now got mangoes on the nose. It's tropical fruity. It's uh, that. There's still that sort of slight. It's not perfume, but there's just a little bit of. It's a, there's a sort of grassiness, meadow, meadow vibe going. Yeah, on. there is. There is lovely. I'm going to go onto the uh, port now. Oh, that port just gets richer and richer. Oh, that port's incredible. I'm gonna have a trace of this. Oh, that it, it's turned into camp coffee. I don't know if you've ever had it, the, the stuff in a bottle. That is amazing. That's, that's. Oh, that is incredible. That is incredible. <laughs> it's, it's like drinking that in, in, in an Indian restaurant. You know, when you get the spices from the curries cooking in the background. You know, there's just yeah, yeah, yeah. That. that just and it's, it's got that well. chai kind of chai tea exactly chai yeah. yeah yeah you've got, got that yeah it's that, chai absolutely it's right a chai latte <laughs> it's absolutely, a chai yeah. it's like um i don't know if you've had the chai that you get at the shroom it's that the shroom chai creamy spice that just yeah yeah Lovely. yeah no it's fabulous fabulous that is uh that is great i have to say i'm gonna go on to that refill now God, this is tough. I'm really this struggling. Is tough. To know. Yeah. This, is, this tough. is really tough. This is tough. Robbie, can I ask you a difficult question? Once yeah. the results have been chosen, what will happen to the de what will the destiny be for these casks that unfortunately didn't make the cut tonight? <laughs> Cast into the sea. <laughs> well, I'm going to be maybe able to help find a home for them as well. <laughs> yeah, Blair, Blair, we'll, we'll, Blair, we'll just blend them away at the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think after the feedback from uh, from you guys and what we've been listening to from everybody that's been watching, I think these all of these casks at some point will be, will be destined to be bottled. They will be. They've got they're, to. They're not going to end up in Isle of Sky or something. Yeah, no, it won't go into that. It would make a good Isle of Sky. <laughs> yeah, it would. Yeah. It could do, but no, I think maybe another year or two we might see these sneaking in somewhere. I would expect. Yeah, they're that good. It's. It would be a shame just to uh, kind of mm. put them in amongst a, a normal core range. But then again, it depends. So write down the cask numbers now and memorize the cask numbers. <laughs> yeah, what you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the next time you get a warehouse tour, you'll be like, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Can we find cask 38? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, cool, absolutely. You. That's useful so a couple of questions, and uh, Sebastian Frohler, can you name the price for one bottle of the, each of them? That will have influence on our voting. I'm like, well, they're actually all relatively close in pricing, so I wouldn't, I, and again, I, it should be a taste-driven thing rather than price, and it's up mm -hmm. to you if you want to buy it afterwards. So actually, we have done that on purpose not to do that, um, but they are all in a similar price area. A lot of people liking B&D. We know that. Um, Couple of people loving, still loving the 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 the, um, the bourbon, there's and um, <laughs> there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Um, uh, what else have we got out here? Uh, how many bottles again? Quick question: How many bottles is the Madeira cast? Did we not mention that? I can't remember. Two hundred eighty-seven. Two hundred eighty-seven. Um, so, and these are going to be available uh, globally, so you're not restricted to well, where you can purchase from. Well. We could only send whiskies to certain countries. We cannot. Okay. You, you cannot. Le you cannot legally send whiskey to the states. Sure, sure, sure. But just so people but, know. Yeah. But yeah, we. I mean, we're, if you've got a tasting pack, you can buy a bottle. Put it that way. Um, good. So good, good, good. Yeah. So I'm gonna. I'm now gonna say to you. Um, 
we're going to go around everybody. Um, we'll start with Rosalind. Rosalind, we've done all four. If I was to say to you, pick two, why Why would you pick, which two would you pick and why? Um, so myself and the fruit fly would go for uh, the bourbon <laughs> barrel. <laughs> the bourbon, the bourbon barrel. barrel. Yeah, and the port um, bourbon because I think it just, it tastes really like a Glengoyne as well as, as everything else we discussed. Um, and the port because, as we said, it's a really good marriage of both. And I think it's, um, as we said, quite rare to have something that's been that long in a, a port cast. So that would be my yeah. choice. So, so you're A and B. Yeah. You're A and B, right? Okay, I'm going to come to the to Christopher and Blair. I'm just going to ask Mike Grant, can you just drop in to visit Glengoyne? You cannot really just drop in to visit Glengoyne. You should be. You need to arrange it beforehand, just with social distancing and how we manage people around the distillery. So please go onto the website if you want to visit. We cannot take real uh, walk-ups. I think is that the situation, Robbie? I think that is the situation. Is it? Oh, that, that is unfortunately, yeah. This year, hopefully, things will improve next year, Gordon. But as mm -hmm. things stand, yeah, we would really That's appreciate it, and it it does break our hearts to turn yeah. people around. It's just, it's just the way things are at the moment. Yeah, we have to, we, we really want to have people there. We know we have a lot of people love going on, going to Glengoyne. It's such a wonderful experience, but we have to keep people safe. And that's the number one prerogative. So uh, we, we cannot take walk ups. So I'm afraid that's- The shop is still open, Gordon. So we still welcome people to the shop. Yeah, if you want to buy stuff from the shop, you're more than welcome to come. But from a tour perspective, yeah. Yes, a little bit more difficult because we have to move people around the distillery. Um, Blair, so if I was to ask you to pick two mm. of your favourites uh, of this four, difficult, I know. I'm going back and forth still. Yeah. What, well, where where, where, where do you think you're at? Again. I'm, I've also noted down, uh, like, Rosalind to A and B. Interesting. Yeah. That's just, I think, like she said, I think the A is just cracking. It's, just, it's really good. My, I am now thinking, hang on, but there's a you know much smaller outturn, so fewer people will get a chance to taste it, which would be a shame. But it's just very, very drinkable. It's classic Glengoyne, but in an interesting, unique way because it's in bourbon. And then for me, the port is just stunning. Just everything about it, it just keeps opening up. The fly chose it, so it must be a sign. <laughs> um, yeah, I just really yeah. like the port. So I'm, I think I'm probably leaning a bit more heavily towards B, but right, also okay. I really, really did like A's the first one. So we've got an A and a B and an A and a B so far. Christopher. I'm, I'm going to rock the boat. I'm a, I'm a B and D. Mm -hmm. I'm a, yeah. the, although I think I know which one's inching it for me over the finish line. It's, don't tell um, us. Don't I'm, tell not gonna us. Tell, I'm not going to tell you. It, it's, it's tough, okay. though, because, you know, I'm, I'm quite, um, you know, these guys will know relatively vocal about well, opinions on Pork, particularly pork cast maturation and how it seems to go wrong more than it goes right. And I think this is a fantastic example of when pork, done, pork cask has been done correctly. It's really, really well integrated. That, that coffee on the nose, once now it's opened up a little bit, is absolutely phenomenal. It's incredible. Um, really, really enjoy it. But this Madeira as well, I think, is um, probably one of the best examples I've come across of Madeira maturation. Again, I've I've had a few and I've not got on well with many of them, but this yeah. one is uh, is very, very well integrated. And none of the, yeah. there's quite a few Madeira casts I've had, I've, I've had a real bitterness to them on the finish that's, uh, that's kind of, it's all been going well with lots of, um, you know, citrus fruits and, and, and fresh fruits on the, on the nose, you know, some great palate flavors. And then, and then they've often been spoiled by kind of bitterness on the finish. And this one doesn't have that. You know, this one's uh, delivering from start to finish, which is which is great. Yeah. Um, just before we go to Robbie, Robbie, a quick question. We hear a lot about the price of casks. What would you say a used bourbon barrel should cost these days? A used one? A bourbon barrel. How much is a bourbon well, barrel? A first fill bourbon barrel these days will cost probably to get it all the way from the States to Glengoyne. On about ninety dollars each, which is about what sixty-five, seventy pounds. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. our Oloroso sherry casks are a lot more than that, aren't they? Oh yeah, you're looking at the best part of you end up towards nine hundred pounds to get uh, uh, first of all sherry butt from a ref mm -hmm. to Glengoyne. 
and that just shows you, you know, that's an, and, 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 and it's one of those things, those mad things about whiskey in terms of you got to buy those casks and make them sit in a warehouse for 10 years. You can see the money goes up from, you don't get the rent benefit for 10 or 12 years or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Robbie, I'm going to come to you now. Where, where are you? And you, now you, you pick the four of them. You've got to now pick your two favorites. So where are you? Yeah, it seems a shame I've got to kind of leave two behind, but I'm in a, I'm in the same camp as uh, Rosalind and Blair. I, I, I knew I was always going to like the bourbon. Mm -hmm. as, as I said, it was one of the first whiskers I ever tried when I was very young was, was that style of whiskers. I knew I was going to love it, and it didn't disappoint. It's exactly what I thought it was going to be. It's just got that pineapple-y, vanilla -y coming through. We've still got bling yeah. going notes coming through after 15 years. It, to me, it's one of these... You know these Moorish whiskies where you just throw, get the top, and just throw it away, and just have a, a really good night. Just just sitting there enjoying a, that whiskey. So I, I love that. And and the uh, the port one, I wasn't sure what to expect, but mm. I think what Christopher was saying is just and, and Rosalind, it's just a really good marriage throughout it. Sometimes the port could domineer it, and it could be kind of a bit sickly. I thought it could have been that, but it isn't. It's just the integration between the Glengoyne and what was in the cast before. It's just outstanding. I've never tasted a port cask. Not that I've tasted many, but no, is, they're pretty I've rare. Never, I've never tasted a going going like that before. Well, there you go. From the, so we've now got three people on A and B, and one on B and D. And so okay. Well, and and the flies have had an integral <laughs> part of this. Um, My I'll fly hasn't voted yet. No, it's not <laughs> dive for well, yet. Tell them to hurry okay. up. Yeah. Do you have an email address? Do you need an email address? Just, <laughs> so just to be um, in line with everybody else, I'm A and B as well. I have to say, I think the bourbon is <laughs> the bourbon is fabulous. It really is fabulous. It's it's this it's the almost the simplest maturation of them all. Um, but it, it is just I keep going back to it. I'm going. This is just superb. Mm -hmm. I love Glengoyne and bourbon. There's lots of Glengoyne in it. Um, I'm a huge fan of it. And then I almost, almost, I think it's probably because we went from that to the port with such a contrast that I think the port, the port is, is I've not tasted a port cast whiskey like that. There's, there's one else, there's one other port cast whiskey that I've had in my lifetime, which was, um, which was a fabulous one as well. And it was fully matured, but I've not tasted anything like that for about five or six years. That is absolutely stunning, that port cask. So, I'm, I, but the bourbon, I'm with you, Robbie. I'm with you, Rosalind. With you, Blair. It's fantastic. It's so, a shame you can't do the two of them as a kind of like double, because as a as you said, side by side, they're really lovely contrasting. Yeah, just between yeah. the two, it's really yeah. really nice. But you still get that house style. You can still tell the connection and synergy between them. Yeah. No, I I, I completely agree. I completely agree. I would say that the general public perception is B and D. So they're with Chris. The four of us, we, we all vote. So, so all five of us like B, uh, four of us like A, and one of us like the Madeira. But I would say there's a lot, as we've seen already, there's a lot more support for the Madeira out there. So I'm going to say to ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go for about a minute till we close your voting. So um, I, I, think I think it's slightly unfair on C. I mean, C is a stunning whiskey as well. Not to, you know, it's just, it had difficult, really difficult competition to be up against tonight. Because C I think is they're all great. A really lovely, lovely whiskey. There so is no right. bad whiskey. It's a brilliant example. I think if that was just in any other tasting, it would have mm. just been outstanding by itself. But because it had such yeah. tough competition, yeah. Yeah, you're right. So, so now I'm gonna now we wait till voting is closed. So we've got another minute to go. Um, uh, so great whiskeys. Anything? Uh, what, anything else to add as a sort of summary? What, what What's your thoughts overall? Very happy with all four of them, Rosalind? Yeah, they're really good. It was hard. Um, yeah, it was hard. <laughs> yeah, it, it was really hard. No one's talked much about C, but it was. It yeah, was C's good. stunning. <laughs> I, I, I agree. It's just, you know, it's like having four great, you know, there's always has to be losers. But, I mean, C would be stunning, in as Robbie said, in, in yeah. any other. So, so um um, right, we're going to close voting. Voting is closed, I think. So I'm now going to ask you if voting is closed. What's your favorite? Um, Robbie, what is your favorite? 
So you went for A and B? Yeah, I'm going to go with B. Your, you're going to go with B, Porty. Okay. Rosalind, what's your favourite? Oh, it's hard. I think probably B, but A was, it was close. And C and D were great too. <laughs> <laughs> B, because as we said, it's a really good marriage of Port and it's quite rare to come across, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Blair? Just as you were speaking there, I very quickly put in my vote for B. Oh, very good, very good. Just very because, good. yeah, it just stands out. I mean, they were all very, very good, as everyone keeps saying, but B just had something a little bit, there's just a bit more to it. Um, I think it will appeal to a lot of people, and it is nice that there's a bigger yield, so that anyone that does want to get a go of it would get a chance to taste it and try it. Yeah. Chris? Oh, tough. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 I'm, Never I'm said it would torn. be easy. I'm, I'm torn because it's, it is so rare for a great, particularly a single, you know, a single Madeira cask to be out there in the world. You know, they're, they're sort of yeah. like finding a unicorn um, amongst the sheep. You know, there's not a lot of them out, out there. Mm. Uh, and, and that part, part of me wants to sort of release one into the wild and, and, and let people enjoy it. But being brutal... I think I have to go with you guys on B. You know, it, it's almost equally as rare to find a great port cask full maturation. And, yeah. and this one, the, the, the variety of aroma and flavor in that, in that one is superb. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Incidentally, I've just blended A and C together. And it, <laughs> right. uh, works, and it works really, <laughs> it works quite well. Right. well. We'll we'll play that game in a minute. Right, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I did that at a tasting last night. That was always fun. Um, um, I am I am absolutely torn here. Uh, I, I, I really, A has grown on me all evening because I've gone back to it. Uh, I really like the port as well. And... I'm going to go with A, just because I love Glengoyne and Bourbon. Uh, it's really difficult, but it just keeps, for me, it's it's a really beautiful balance of spirit and maturation for me. Um, and for me, I, I, and, and I'll tell you where it came, when I first did the blending malt master at uh, where you blend your own whiskey, and, and I, I, the bourbon was a refill, this was the first one, a refill, and I was just like, this is incredible. This bourbon refill is absolutely amazing. Um, and I've tasted when going a few times in bourbon and I love it and I do love it. That port is fabulous. I, I mean, it, it is it is eatsy peatsy, but just from my perspective, the bourbon is is great. Um, so I'm gonna go A, I'm gonna be a bit different, but B seems to be the winner on the panel. So now let's see the winner from everybody out there. Isn't this exciting? Woo! Is it A, is it B, is it C, or is it D? Oh, 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 there's a lot of... Ooh, oh, a lot of spirit resurgence. The port has come through at the end. <laughs> the Madeira, now that's interesting. That might have been us lot. Well. <laughs> but the Madeira was winning uh, 10 minutes ago. And now the port, my bourbon's a third unfortunately but uh, i'm really happy i'm gonna buy a bottle of the bourbon it's absolutely fabulous yeah. uh, the, the the port sorry well there we go the port is the winner so a lot of love out there for b a lot of love for d but alas the b's have got it so um uh fantastic i think they're all great happy with that peter neubert woohoo dominic shum yes b b b b Steve Laidlaw, uh, panel, panel influence, I think. I'm not sure. Oh, no, I, I, I think I think Eric's got it right. Uh, uh, Eric Herman in the in the comments saying B and D have to be bottled, and I think he's I think he's onto it there. Maybe bottle B now, wait a little while, and bottle D uh, next I'm, year. I'm, I'm, we'll have you back in in, in 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 three months to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's no, I'm I'm joking. Joking. the sounds of it that all the bottles are still out, and I think something we've not really highlighted tonight is that these are single cast. So, I mean, that's it. It's, you know, it really is just the example of that cask at that particular time. And you can't replicate that. So no matter how much people want, you know, cask be again, it will never, the other, what was it, two casks you had, Robbie? As well. Yeah. So, I mean, they'll be similar, but they won't be exactly the same as it, which I think is what makes, for me anyway, that's what makes single cask whiskey so exciting. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And, and I think this has been a, 
a really good exercise to showcase different styles and note that all those lucky people who have had you know um those those to sample at home i mean i don't think robbie in the time you've been at glengoyne which is much longer than i've been can you think of ever doing a tasting with four such different casks no as i said this is the first time we've done this yeah no, no, never had this opportunity before, so it's it's really good. It's really good we've had an opportunity to go in there and bring out four amazing whiskies in there. And we, you know, the criteria is quite you go going for younger ones. Next time we could go for a slightly older ones. There's about nine or ten thousand casks waiting for us all down in the warehouse there. So we've got a lot of fun in the future. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm I'm really looking forward to that. I have to say, it's going to be a it's going to be a good uh, a good time when we get people more involved in what we're choosing for Glengoyne in the future, which is great. So um, um, I hope everybody has enjoyed the evening and the whiskies. And those who haven't, I hope we've given you an insight into, into the quality of what we can produce at Glengoyne down to, down to Robbie's team at the distillery producing a beautiful spirit and our cask management, which is, which is, I think is absolutely wonderful. And uh, so um, uh, Rosalind, anything to, anything to add at the end, anything to, uh, I think to, I mean, have you enjoyed the evening? How are your fruit flies going? <laughs> uh, no, uh, we're, uh, we're fine. The fruit fly is still in the bourbon bottle. Um, no, it's been great. It's been really good to try all the different um, casks. And as you said, they're all very different. And uh, yeah, it's been great to see what everyone's thought. And I'm glad that one won, but it was it was hard. They were all really good. So hopefully you can do something with the rest of them. <laughs> we managed something. Yeah. No, it's uh, it, it, it's great to see so many examples of, of fantastic different full term maturations in, in different cars. I think this is a this is a great uh, this pack was a great education uh, opportunity for anybody that really wants to get their uh, get their head around what different cars cast types can do to a particular distillery character. I think the only thing I would even say is add in a refill bourbon in there. You know, get get a refill of the same age in there, and you've you've effectively got everything you could possibly need to know about the influence of, of different wine casts and uh, different spirit casts on Glengoyne style. It's a great opportunity, and thanks for having us along. Yeah. No, no, not at all. I think it was great. I, I think it was very exciting for you know people to take these packs to do it at home and actually have the results live. When you first approached about it, I thought we would do this tasting and then there'd be like seven days until the results came out. But doing it live was really exciting. It's almost like watching Eurovision or something for whiskey. I loved it. It, 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 it is, it is like that. It is. And we have, a, we, we have, we, and we have all our callers from Germany and all over the place. And Royal Mini exactly. tonight has actually won some points, I think, which is great. So um, absolutely. And I can tell everybody it is for sale. So you can pick it up on the website now glengoyne.com slash casks unlocked um now um I, I, so it is on there the the port cask so get your get yourselves in there for that so we hope you've enjoyed it we've had an absolute ball i think that's fair it's been a great evening rosalind blair christopher thank you very much um robbie um you can have the final word what else uh, what a great evening thank you for arranging it and picking such wonderful casks that was absolutely my pleasure. Uh, I didn't expect it to be as good. I knew we'd get perhaps two or three good whiskies. I didn't expect us to get four such high quality whiskies at such just spending one hour in, in a warehouse there. And I'm really glad I could spend it with uh, these three esteemed people as well. I've, I've really enjoyed the comments, really educated comments there. And uh, obviously these guys know the stuff. Yeah, no, it's been great. And I really would like to thank you for taking your time out to come. Thank you. Um, and I hope you've all enjoyed this Glengoyne Live. It's been great. And, um, you know, we, we're a family-run business. We strive to make great whiskey, and we hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Until Cheers. next time. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. See you again soon. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Bye-bye.